Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And we're talking today about the New Balance SC Trainer V2. The V1 was really popular with us last year. Yeah. But it didn't start off that way. I think we were a little confused as the intent behind the shoe, even though it says SC Trainer. I think we got the vibes that it was supposed to be a fast shoe. Um, and you took it out for a 5K. <laughs> the story that I was hearing was that it was illegal, so it was over the stack height limit for racing. Looks really bouncy. It's got a super carbon plate in here. It had all the trimmings of a marathon shoe. And when I talked to New Balance at the time, they were like, yeah, this could be the marathoner for maybe somebody who doesn't want the elite, like that second tier, maybe that mid three hour uh, marathoner and up versus you know some of the elites. So when I got it on, I ended up taking it from the box out to a 5K. Wasn't the best 5K because I got stuck behind a ton of people walking because it was the Boston 5K and people didn't line up with where their pace was going to be. So I had to do a lot of dodging, weaving, and running through people, but the shoe felt really heavy and I was like, what is going on? You can't race in this shoe. And I kind of feel like I'm correct in that. Yeah, I definitely think the intent for this shoe, and it is, is a, is a daily trainer. It's for logging tons of miles. You can pick up the pace a little bit if you want, but it's not going to be your real fast 5K shoe. But that's where it really gained popularity. People who tried the shoe and got into the shoe and use it for their long runs and their daily training really love the comfort, the squish, the bounce, and having that little bit of energy coming off the plate. Yeah, it was one of my favorite trainers, not only because of the comfort, but the carbon fiber plate on those recovery days, on those easy days, like your legs just don't feel beat up afterwards. And that's what I absolutely loved about it. So we were a little nervous. Really nervous. When they came out the SC Trainer V2. V2. Meg, what were we afraid of? I mean, I just didn't want to lose this bouncy, fun, yeah, it was a little heavy, but just a fun daily training kind shoe. Kind of squishy, bouncy, yeah. yeah. It like, it had some life to it and it just, it was fun and I was really nervous because when um, we chatted with the team at the running event, they mentioned that the stack was going down um, and a few other changes like to the upper, it's completely different. And I was just wondering if we were gonna have that magic. I think that we're pleasantly surprised that everything worked out okay. But before we get to that, why don't we just break down the shoe for you, let you know what we've got here in this new version and uh, take it from there, Meg. Yeah, so let's start with the upper, which I know a lot of people are going to be very happy about because in this version, for whatever reason, this situation, collar, tongue area here, it rubbed the front of your ankle. Not everybody. Okay, 99% of people, <laughs> it effed up their ankles, including mine. And so for whatever reason, after like five or six runs, it went away. Before we go on from that, I'm gonna be the one guy that says, I think I actually like this upper better. Oh. I don't hate this upper, it's not a downgrade, but I just really like this upper, the stretchiness of the top, it just felt good. This one is a little more traditional. Yeah, so you're gonna have a little bit more of that structure around the collar and heel. You have a nice gusseted tongue. Um, still a very light upper here. Maybe just a little bit more structured, a little bit more support to give you that like daily training feel. There's lots of cushioning in this collar. It has that familiar feel that you're looking for from a running shoe. It locks in nice. I didn't have any issues with heel lift in this one. I think in the original one, maybe when you're first getting going, you might've had a little bit of heel lift and then it kind of like broke in and you didn't uh, notice that anymore. This one out of the box, there's no heel lift. Gentle hugging around the collar. Very light engineered mesh upper. It has some structural weaving where you're going to need that extra support but it's pretty wide open over the toes the tongue on this one i got a little bit of lace bite over the arch i know you didn't experience that but i'm not sure if it's where this stitching is right here but as it's on top of the foot i did feel a little bit of pressure it didn't seem to bother me i loosened up the laces redid it and the second time i went out for a run i made sure that i was tying it and pulling the tongue up just right to make sure Overall, I don't think it's gonna be an issue for most people. And it wasn't an issue for you. No, not at all. In fact, I think this upper update is wonderful. Like I love it, it's comfortable. It feels like a daily trainer should. That's the thing though, is this still fall in that daily trainer cat category for you? I think so. So let's move down to the midsole. While they dropped the stack, they said that they made the foam a little more resilient, 
little more airy, a little more bouncy, so that they were able to bring the stack down and still provide you with that bounce and that fun run ride. Did you feel like it achieved that? Yeah, um, the foam is definitely not as, as dense. It's not as heavy. Um, you feel that out on the run. I was, like we mentioned earlier, very nervous about the reduction in stack, which I am with any shoe that does that, but I didn't notice it in a negative way. I did feel like the shoe felt much more stable. I think when you first put on the SC trainer, it gets a little bit to get used to. Like you feel a little bit like Bambi out there. Whereas this one, no issues with that. Like you feel confident and comfortable and stable in this shoe. I think some of the other things that help with the stability are the new geometry that they use here. You can really see how wide the throat is here versus this one. So you can see they shrink up the cavity there and another thing they did may explain what we did with the foam here to kind of create a little more stability on the inside. Yeah, so it's, you can tell, well, maybe you can tell that it's angled in a little bit versus just a straight cut in the first one. Like a straight canyon wall and this one kind of goes to the side here a little bit. So you're gonna get a little bit more of that stability from just the shape of the midsole as well. Yeah, and that's on the medial side. You're really gonna notice you're not sinking in as much as you might have in the original. The carbon fiber plate is still there. I don't think much has changed uh, in that area. So you still have that really nice bounce to it like you did in the previous version. You've got a lot of miles on yours already. Like, yeah. You're probably close to 50. I'm thinking so. All yeah. right, can you kind of give me an idea of how you've been using it, what you like about it, what you wouldn't use it for? Yeah, I mean, I've been using this like a typical daily trainer. So all my easy miles, I've been lacing this up. Um, it also feels great on those uh, strides at the end of a, a run. So when you're just picking up the pace, I didn't hate it. I think also because it has gotten lighter. Um, what is the weight now? So my women's seven and a half is 7.9 ounces. It used to be eight point, almost nine ounces. So almost an ounce lighter. Yeah, mine was 10.4 ounces versus 11.4 ounces on this one. So again, dropping about an ounce, which does make a huge difference, especially when you're talking about those striders and that kind of stuff. I mean, that's substantial weight loss for a shoe like this. Yeah, so I can see people wanting to use this almost for race day, just because you do have a carbon fiber plate, it is lighter. I think it fits more the original intention where this could be that person who doesn't want necessarily go all in on a super shoe or something like that. This is more durable. You've got rubber coverage. You've got a more durable upper. This shoe is made to gobble up miles. We know this one people are putting major miles on. Yeah. So I think you're still going to be able to get that out of this shoe. I also enjoyed it. I felt like the turnover is a little faster. It feels a little bit more peppy. It does kind of lose a little bit of that soft like give that you had in the original one, but it, I don't know that it's enough that it's really gonna make you like, oh geez, I wish I had the original. I think that upgrades to this will make you happy that you have the upgrade. Part of that upgrade is that it does turn this into a more versatile shoe. So like you were saying, like maybe you can race in this, maybe this is the shoe that you can do your daily training and then also lace up on the start line. So sure, you're it's an $180 shoe, which is you know higher up there, but like we said, you're getting a carbon fiber plate and you can use it for pretty much everything. And that kind of puts it into competition with another shoe I love, the Super Blast. Yeah. Now Super Blast is lighter, it's more expensive. It is also one of those shoes that I feel like you can take from daily training to picking up the pace a little bit. I feel like this shoe covers that space as well. So while it is more expensive at a 180 price point than your lower end shoes, I feel like that extra money gets you extra use out of it. So it kind of expands the shoe. Yep, for sure. So Thomas, are you giving this a green light or a red light? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a and give it a green. <laughs> I'm also giving this one a green. I've been loving getting the miles in this one. I'm so happy that they didn't mess up the shoe. I was very nervous. So um, yeah, the updates are great. The only other thing that we didn't mention, Meg, was that the drop changed from about eight to, to six. six. So it's a little closer to the ground feeling, yep. but the toe off is really nice. The toe spring still makes it feel like a fast shoe. And moving forward. by the time this video comes out, it'll probably almost be out because this one comes out June 7th. All right, so that wraps it up for the SC Trainer V2. Megan, you gonna still stack up some more miles on that? Yeah, definitely. This one's staying in the rotation. I'm loving it, um, and yeah. All right, so you know what to do now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe. Also, you can check out our podcast, The Drop, 
and Fuel for the Soul with Megan Featherston if you're into nutrition. But the best way to track everything is probably to subscribe to our email. All the links are in the description. So check it out. Thank you.